Now, CDN, if you're not familiar with it, is a content delivery network. We can choose one here, Google or Microsoft, and what content delivery networks do, especially in our case where it's asking us specifically about jQuery, is instead of your server having to deliver the resource file for, in this case, jQuery, content delivery networks do that for you. So in other words, instead of the jQuery file being loaded from our domain, it'll be sent to the user, it'll be loaded from Google. Now this is good for a number of reasons. The two biggest ones are, one, that's less work that your server has to do, so it's gonna be a little bit faster. But even more importantly, a lot of people use the Google Content Delivery Network, and because of that, many, many people who are browsing the internet already have this jQuery resource file downloaded from Google's Content Delivery Network, more specifically. Therefore, their browser probably has that file cached, so when they're browsing your site, and your site says, hey, make sure you load this page, the browser itself, in a lot of cases, already have a downloaded cached version of that resource file, in this case, of that jQuery file, so it doesn't even have to download it at all because it already has it from when the visitor was visiting another website. This is really, really helpful because it's one less file that they have to download when they're visiting your site. Or again, one less file that the browser has to download when the visitor is on your site. If we open these up, we can choose which version of jQuery we want. This is, down here we have this for jQuery UI. We can change the jQuery UI version. And I almost forgot to mention that you wanna keep this checked, use the minified resources. The minified resources are basically versions of the resources that have all spaces taken out. They're condensed down to as small of a file size as possible. They're not human readable by any means, but they don't have to be because the browser really is the only thing that has to look at them. So there's really never a reason not to use the minified resources. Again, I don't think we've made any changes here, but I'll click Save Configuration just to be safe. Then we'll move on to CSS minification. And basically, you just want to click Y UI here. As we just talked about, minification is the process of condensing a file down to the smallest size that it can be. And Y UI is a service that does that. And we're going to let Y UI do that for us. We can let Drupal Core do that for us. It does have the capability of doing that, but it's not as good as Y UI. We can also turn it off altogether if we want. Not really a good reason to do that. So make sure you have YUI selected. And again, we haven't changed anything here, but I do like to click Save Configuration just to be safe. Then over on JavaScript minification, we have something similar. We have three different methods of minifying our JavaScript files. Remember over here, it was just for CSS. Now we're on JavaScript. And JSqueeze, as we can see, is the fastest delivering minifier for JavaScript files. So we're just gonna go with that. I usually like to keep the licensing comments in, mostly, as this says, to better follow the spirit of the GPL. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. Just leave this checked. And click Save Configuration. Finally, we have Modifications. Now our first option here is to enable pre-process on all JavaScript. As it says here, this will force all JavaScript to have the preprocess attribute set to true. Uh, all JavaScript files will be aggregated if enabled. You can feel free to play around with this. Check it if you want. See if it causes any problems on your website. If not, you're probably okay keeping this checked. I typically don't select this option just because I'm not always 100% confident about the way that it's gonna be aggregating everything. And up to this point, I feel like we've already done a whole lot to optimize the loading of our JavaScript resources. So just to be safe, I usually leave this unchecked, but again, feel free to play around with it. Down here though, we have optimize JavaScript ordering. We're gonna check both of these. The first is move all ex external scripts to the top of the execution order. In other words, when our site is loading the various JavaScript files that it needs to display everything properly and to do everything properly, all external scripts, particularly those that are delivered by content delivery networks, are gonna be at the top. The reason you often wanna do this is because these are usually libraries that affect 
further JavaScript on down the page. So you want them loaded first. And then we want to also move all browser conditional JavaScript to the bottom of the group. Typically, it's not necessary to load these types of JavaScript files until all the rest of the JavaScript on your page is loaded. So we'll keep this at the bottom in other so we'll keep this at the bottom in order to simply streamline the loading of all of our JavaScript. Let's also open up adjust JavaScript location and execution. Now this is a place where you do have to be careful. We have two main options here, move JavaScript to the footer and then have deferred JavaScript execution. Add the deferred tag to all script tags. In other words, what this does, if we read down here, it will delay the script execution until the HTML parser has finished. Usually, your JavaScript files are not going to be doing anything until all of the HTML has loaded anyway. So this can be really helpful. But first, let's go back up here. Move JS to the footer. What this does is instead of loading the JavaScript at the top of your web page, it's going to put everything near the bottom because Again, like I said, usually with JavaScript, whatever the script is doing, it's waiting for the whole page to load before it does anything anyway. So it doesn't really make sense to have it at the very top of the page when it's actually slowing down the loading of the page itself. If it's at the footer, then the page will load faster. You get to see everything on the screen. And then after a number of milliseconds, the JavaScript itself will load and then it will do whatever it needs to do onto the page. I typically like to choose all but core here. I imagine that there may be a few things in Drupal core that need to load for whatever reason before a lot of the HTML does. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is kind of a nice middle ground to make sure you're not really breaking anything. This is a setting that I would recommend you choose and then save as it is and then maybe navigate around on your site a little bit. We can go back to site, click on a couple pages, make sure nothing's broken. And if everything looks good, then you should be fine. And 99% of the time, this should not cause any problems. But if it does, you can disable that. Same thing here with deferred JavaScript execution. As I said, what this does is it forces all of the JavaScript to wait to do anything until all of the HTML has loaded. And again, that just makes your page load a little bit faster. Once again, JavaScript usually does this on its own. So it's often not going to change anything or break anything. If you at least say all but external scripts, sometimes you do want the external scripts to go ahead and load. Or in fact, often you want the external scripts to go ahead and load because other scripts might depend on them to do certain things. If you don't go ahead and load the external scripts, then it might break the other scripts. So I will often choose all but external scripts. I very rarely will choose all here. And then we'll save. And I'm not going to go through the process again, but you'll want to maybe poke around on your site a little bit, make sure nothing's broken. And if it did happen to break everything with anything, which it should not, you can just back off and disable that. We also have enable preprocess on all CSS. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to trust that the bundler is handling everything just fine. But then we do have similar options as we had with JavaScript, optimize CSS ordering, move all external CSS to the top of the execution order. This is usually a good idea, again, to make sure that there's no other CSS that depends on something else that you've already loaded externally and then move all browser conditional CSS to the bottom of the group for the same reason that we did with JavaScript. And if we look at adjust CSS location and execution, we're only gonna have experimental settings. This isn't really anything that you want to, or in most cases should play around with. Usually you want the CSS to load at the very top of the page and you don't wanna do anything to mess around with that besides maybe just kind of ordering things a little bit differently. You don't want to actually move them to a different part of the page. Otherwise your site's gonna look a little bit weird. Once you've done that, click Save Configuration, and we're done configuring AdVag. With the configuration options that AdVag provides us, we've now optimized the loading of scripts and style sheets on our site to make our pages load faster. And in doing so, we've made search engines like our website even more, thus improving both our page rank and our user experience because things are loading faster. As long as you use it correctly, and don't try to get too aggressive 
with some of your aggregation settings, there's really nothing to lose when using AdVag. All Drupal sites should use it. It might not yield the most visible results, but it does do a lot to improve your site. So with all that done, back here on the SEO checklist, we're gonna check off Configure Advanced CSS JS Aggregation Module and click Save.